All right, what's going on, guys? Today we're going to show people how to play on Play TCG, the other Pokemon trading card game site, the unofficial one that I've been using a little bit lately since TCGO is still in beta and still has a lot of stuff to work on before it becomes really, really good. Uh, so what you're going to do is go to this site right here. This is like the site that kind of hosts Play TCG. It's uh, bbsearch.com. I'll put a link in the description so you don't have to type all that out. And you'll see Deckless Builder log in here, and we're going to register free. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you know how to make accounts on websites, but just in case, you know, you'll put stuff here. Uh, oh, here's my real email address. Uh, put your screen name, whichever you want to be, right here. So, like, I would be Cooper Koshiro. I think there's no spaces allowed. Can you do underscores? Yeah, you can do underscores, but uh, whatever. Camel case underscore, whatever. For country code, some people get confused on this. Um, I'm pretty sure just USA is fine. I don't think it's the actual like number that your country is. Uh, USA, can for Canada, all, you know, whatever. I don't think it really, really matters. This stuff is probably optional. You can make it up if you want to. And uh, then, of course, you know, this. And then register, and I'm not, not actually going to send this, but, you know, you'll come to your, your email, and you'll get the... Uh, this BB, BB search verification code which you'll use to verify and then they'll also send this which will be your password and stuff and uh, yeah that's, that should be pretty pretty straightforward so it shouldn't be too hard so then you'll come here and type in your stuff and your stuff and log in and here you'll be taken to the deckless creator so we're gonna make a we're gonna make a deck on the screen here's your deckless that you've already made um, some account information if you actually have a organized play ID which I think is now called P exclamation P not POP uh, I have one but I haven't registered it because whatever's uh, so here we're gonna make a new deck list and what are we gonna make um, let's make a let's make a Reshiflosion deck sure uh, I'm, I'm just not gonna keep this Typhlosion how do you spell Typhlosion Ty let me just type out Typhlosion Typhlosion. Reshiflosion. There we go. <laughs> I can only spell Typhlosion if I actually spell Typhlosion. And this is just our sample thing. Alright, so we're going to add this and then we'll see this over here. And we've got the decklist name and a description of it when you last updated it. And I'm not really sure what point. I guess copy is fine if you want to like have this like two variants of the same deck. But uh, anyway, we're going to click this magnifying glass for view. And here's the deck editor. Um, oh, and they've actually added some new stuff via this too. You can edit the sample and stuff. This site, one thing about it is it's getting rapidly updated, unlike TCGO. So there's changes being made left and right. This it's probably changed since I've uh, I've been using it. But how you add cards to, to the deck? And right now, as far as I know, you can only add cards currently in the modified format, which is as of this time, Heart Gold Soul Silver on. And uh, there are a couple of ways to do this. Like, say you want to get this um, Alamomola, the uh, black and white number 39. You could type in the set code, which is BW39. And there you go. There's that card. It pretty much just matches the string. Or if you want to get something like, uh, like we're going to get Reshiram. Just Resh, and there you go. You got your full art Reshiram. We'll do two of each. So here's this. You can click this magnifying glass to see a big... Uh, print out or a big uh, view of it if you forget exactly what the card does make sure you want to add it so let's add two of these quantity change that to two add card and we'll do the same for we'll throw two full arts in there as well just to be different hey eh? what else do we need we need a typhlosion which uh, you can either backspace out of this or just hit if you put in some nonsense you can put clear you can put clear <laughs> um, Apparently technical difficulties, but uh, anyway, so yeah, you can only do things in modified format. One of the most difficult cards to get is in, like the trainer card in, uh, because it's going to match so much, so uh, what you might want to do is hit NV just to try to get noble victories, and uh, if you know exactly what card number in is, that would be really helpful as well. I, I don't. Um, in is noble victories 101 or 92, so you would for in you would want to put NV 92, that would be the fastest way to get him because it's kind of a weird card name it, it being only a uh, being only one letter but outside that you should be able to add in whatever let's add in some actually we're gonna 
We are going to add in some in just because I said that. We'll throw in four. This is not going to be like a real deck list. I'm just going to throw stuff in here that happily makes sense. Throw in some Cyndaquil. Um, sure, this Call of Legends one is fine. I'm just going to be a noob and throw in a 4-4-4 line of Typhlosion. Because I don't care. We're just trying to add cards to the deck. And we want... Here that. We want some Typhlo Prime. There we go. Pretty sure that is not the correct <laughs> thing you would want to do for that. Um, certainly we'd want some Rare Candy. We're throwing in copies of four. Uh, what, what else? Does, I don't know what else this deck runs. You know what we're just going to do? So, so you guys see how to do add, add cards now. We're just going to throw in... We have 24 cards in this deck. Let's add in... Math don't... How, how many can we add in total? 25. That'll give me 49, right? Yeah, if you want to add more than four copies of a card, it'll give you a prompt to make sure you do, which uh, obviously that's only legal for basic energy cards and Arceus cards, but there's no Arceus cards right here uh, in this format, so that leaves me 49, so let's add in let's add in 11 of the other one to uh, bring us up to that. Um, obviously you're not gonna, this is not a <laughs> real deck, <laughs> deck list, uh, it's got eight trainers, you should never run eight trainers in a deck, that's way too few, so you can do a deck check here to make sure you've got um, you know, no violations and stuff. Make sure you got 60 cards and at least one basic, uh, no four card violations, etc. So, and we can edit our stuff to sample crap strategy. This is something I haven't seen before. I'm actually just seeing it right now. And then we click save. All right. So now we can go back to deck lists right here. And now we've got Reshiflosion sample crap. So, how do we battle with this deck now that we've got it made? Well, we go over here to playtcg.com, which I have both of these, you know, bookmarked right here so I can make them really easily. And these two links are fairly useless, I guess, to us. Uh, if you're watching this video, they'll be fairly useless to you. So you have to log in again, which is fine, I guess. Type in password. There we go. So... Um, there's also a training video you can link, link, eh, watch here if you want to watch that too. But uh, I'm interested in seeing if there's uh, any new changes too. So we're going to come here to create new battle. And let's see, we, we're going to do, uh, let's use this Reshiflosion deck that we just made, which sucks, and create a new game with it. Click right here. You can also check, uh, well actually no, you can't check that right there, that's a server error application. Um, but anyway, you can still check it from by going back to uh, this site and checking it out. So just keep both these sites handy in your bookmarks. So you've got three options here. Um, public game, now that they have added a chat, might be okay, but generally you're going to want to do one of these two. Um, I haven't done much with password games yet. Um, so I think we're just going to stick with a private game here. There is uh, one little problem with private games that I'll get to in a moment. So let's just click continue with that. And so here's this link. It's, only, it's kind of in small font. You guys might not be able to read it. But uh, pretty much it's going to have this uh, blah, 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 opponent choose deck dot ASPX. Question ID equals something and key equals something. Now here's where the annoying part comes in. The annoying part is that, okay, m most of us uh, use Zats, right? Well, Zats messed this link up, so that's kind of annoying. Um, so you usually end up having to like type manually type in some, if not all, of this kind of issue. If you have someone on Instant Messenger or uh, Skype or something like that, that's way easier. Not a, not a problem, but uh, if, it, if you're just communicating in a Zat, just keep that in mind. So what we're going to do is copy this, and I'm going to boot up... Sure, no, not Internet Explorer. Let's boot up... Um... Whatever, we'll just do another window. Another window of Chrome will suffice. We're just going to paste that in there. And uh, t once you paste it in there, this is this tab is for the opponent. This tab is for you, we'll say. Or you could switch roles. You know, they can make the game, whatever. Let's, uh, pretending that I am now a different person, we're going to join with... Let's join with Aaron, Sally, and Jason. That deck. So we get taken to this. And here we go. Game started. So the thing about this game, or uh, this site is that everything is completely manual there's no automation kind of at all <laughs> so you all, you have to know exactly what the cards do there's no rule enforcement whatsoever so let's just start off by having both draw six and how do we do that 
Well, if we wanted to, we could just drag off six cards from the top of here. Three. Why well, I say six? Seven. What am I talking about? There's six and there's seven. All right. But the better thing to do, there is a game setup thing right here, and this will draw your six prizes as well as your hand. But because of the way the rules uh, work with uh, having no basics, I usually don't do that. Because if you get no basics, you need, you know, you're supposed to check for basics and then set out your prizes according to the flow of the game. I'm pretty sure. So usually I just draw seven. So you just come here to deck this little tap at the top. Oh, by the way, if you uh, if you see something like this, where you don't see this bar, hit Control and minus, and that will zoom you out. Alternately, you can hold down Control if you have a scrolly wheel on your mouse, and uh, scroll up to zoom in, scroll back to zoom out. That will work too. Or scroll down to zoom out, scroll up to zoom in. That will work too. And uh, you'll probably have to do that. I don't know if it's just this monitor. Maybe if you have a big monitor, that's not necessary. But uh, anyway, just keep that in mind. So anyway, so we're here, yeah, now we're here with our opening hands, and uh, looks like we got a Wubat on this on this side, and we got a full art Reshiram, Reshiram I should say, on the other side. So you got some little things down here. These are for your special conditions: burn, confusion, paralyze, poison, and sleep. Which uh, you can throw those little markers on whenever a status condition comes on. Got some damage counters right here, and here is your dice, which is used instead of coins in most competitive play in real life. So that's what they uh, elected to use here. And the uh, normal convention is that evens are heads and odds are tails. So we're going to say over here called tails. So this side will roll and gets a four, which means this side will go first. So we're, or I think, I think we actually set out prizes first, but there is a deck play six prizes before you roll. But anyway, it doesn't, doesn't really make too much of a difference since uh, it's not going to... Well, there is no more decision to go first or second. There used to be a decision to go first or second because there used to be a, an advantage, small advantage to going second in that you could play uh, play trainer cards and stuff on your, if you went second, but you couldn't if you go, went first. But that's in the past. So anyway, so this deck starts, and um, initially we got this setup basic stage, so we're going to click here when finished because the first turn's about to start. And we're gonna flip over this to reveal Wubat and Wubat versus Reshiram. I wonder who's gonna win. So this deck will start its turn. A couple of ways to do this. Let's see if this works. Yes, yeah, so you can tap tap a uh, number key at the uh, the top row or maybe even on your numpad. I'm not sure. Uh, that should work too. Anyway, so or you can just drag the top card or you can come here to deck draw one. You know, several ways you can go about drawing your card, but uh. Since I just put like a million fire energies in this deck, we're just going to uh, attach one and say pass. So if you have someone on Skype or something, that's one way to do it. Uh, alternately, this just got added somewhat recently. You can send uh, messages. You can see there's a ton of messages for drawing card, card to hand, card to prizes, that type of stuff. And uh, we can type in a, say, uh, end, end turn, something like that and shortly it will pop up over here it says opponent says in turn so now we know to start this turn and let's try using the numpad does the numpad work yes it does okay and you see there it kinda went like behind this swoo bat one thing you can do is do arrange if you wanna get your hand sorta neat and, com and uh, arrange there you can also compress it if you've got a ton of cards in your hand <laughs> like you would have to have what probably 20 25 or so cards in your hand in order for that to be worthwhile but uh, this way you can kind of see everything. It's nice and nice and ordered. So let's throw a uh, throw a DCE on here, and let's do a interviewer's questions. Why not? Let's see, I'm, I'm gonna move actually manually move my cards over here for uh, reasons you're about to see. And so interviewer's questions for those familiar with what it does. You look at the top eight cards and choose energy from there. So. Uh, Usually what I do is I'm really lazy and I just throw eight cards out here. But if you put them on the map, the opponent can see them too. So that's not really what you're supposed to do. Uh, so I just put cards in my hand over here to make a clear like separation. Like this is my real hand. And then I just drag the eight cards right here. So we got a darkness energy. Switch, rainbow energy, communication. And now we're going to encroach over on this side. So that's six, seven and eight so we're going to uh, in order to reveal them to the opponent we're going to put them out here on the map the ones we want to take with interviewers questions and then the rest get shuffled back in so 
if you were to actually, how would, you know what? I'm I'm actually gonna cheat, or am I? Yeah, I'm actually gonna cheat. I'm gonna keep this pont as well, for Professor Oak's new theory, so that I can show something next turn. So we're we're gonna cheat and uh, put this Oak's new theory in the hand as well, just for the sake of showing stuff off without having to manually get to it. So these other cards that we shuffled in to the deck or that we put on top of the deck, we're gonna go to deck shuffle, and that will shuffle the deck for us and. Uh, you can see here, it'll uh, say, oh, the opponent shuffled the deck. So there's a log if you didn't catch what just occurred. And uh, I don't think Wubat can attack, so we'll pass on this turn as well. All right, so Typhlosion deck goes again. As you can see, we can just drag a card over here. We've got a Syndaquil, throw another Fire Energy on it. And we can do Reshiram's Outrage for 20. So one of the things is you can only manipulate stuff on your side. You can't touch the opponent's cards. So, like, you have to say, like, like uh, out Outrage for 20, and then they have to come and drag this little counter from down here, put it on top of your Wubat, double-click it, and it'll have this uh, place amount of damage counters on here. There are two ways to go about this. You can either put on 20 because it did 20 damage, or you can put on 2 because that's represented by 2 counters, 2 physical, you know, glass beads or whatever. So uh, I usually go by the number of counters. The only time that's going to get confusing, like, you're not going to see 200 or, you know, you're not going to see 120 on there and think, oh, he's got 120 damage counters on him. Um, likewise, you're not going to see 12 and say, oh, he has 12 damage because it's only multiples of 10. The only time that gets confusing is if you have 10, and it's a question of, uh, do you have 10 damage or 10 damage counters for 100 damage? But anyway, just make sure that's uh, that convention is known between you and your opponent. That shouldn't be a big deal. Um, obviously, in, in, on this one, communicating with the opponent is uh, very important. <laughs> so this is why I would really only recommend doing this with friends and people you know you can you know and can talk to and say random matchup for TCGO where the rules are going to be enforced and stuff so okay so now Wubat has 20 damage on it this deck will draw and gets gets a metal energy we're going to uh, attach a rainbow which rainbow energy uh, puts one drops one damage counter when you attach it from the hand so we're going to increase the damage that this does you can also just drag a new counter, but that just gets kind of messy, especially since this can go up to 9 and 9 and 9 and 9, <laughs> which you wouldn't want to do. But uh, that's going to take him up to uh, 3 damage counters on him. Let's evolve him into a Swoobat, I suppose. And uh, here's wh why I wanted to uh, steal that Pont with uh, new questions. So when you do something like Oak's New Theory, which makes you shuffle in your hand, and you're going to go to hand, if, you, if you're playing like a Professor Juniper, or Professor Oak, something like that, uh, original Professor Oak, you would uh, discard it. You can also show your hand to your opponent if you're doing if they do something like um, I'm trying to think of a current metagame card that would do that, um, but like um, uh, oh, like uh, Smurgle, like the uh, what's that what's that thing called? Uh, Portrait Smurgle. He uh, gets to pick a supporter card from the opponent's hand. So like that's how you would show that, and then uh, you can reverse that by clicking hide. And I already talked about arrange and compress. So in this case, we're going to click return. Do we want to return hand to deck? Yes, we do. So we will shuffle in. Automatically shuffles for you. And we will draw six as per the effect of Oak's new theory. Okay. And let's see what else we want to get. We got a we got a clink. And we have a clean clang as well. So let's use this opportunity to show off how you search the deck. We're going to do a Pokemon communication. And... Uh, Put that on the mat for a moment to uh, reveal to the opponent that we are indeed shuffling in a Pokemon. Move it then to the deck, and then we will go to search deck. You can uh, you can always search the discard pile and opponent's discard pile. Those are public knowledge, so you don't have to worry about those. You can also show prizes. Um, we're gonna sneaky sneaky on that. This is this is for something uh, such as like the old Azelf with Time Walk, something like that, and uh, it will it will give your opponent a message. Your opponent is searching their prizes. I don't. I'm not sure if there's any current metagame cards that let you do that. I know that um, the Azelf lets you do that with Time Walk, so that that's how you do that. And uh, now we're gonna search deck. And uh, since you're not ordinarily supposed to be searching your deck at any given time, you know your opponent will get a a little uh, thing here that says your opponent is searching their deck. So that way, you know they can confirm, okay, you're not like cheating. You actually played communication. You know you're you're doing it legit. So we're going to get out, uh, well, let's get out a uh, Fliptini, why don't we? Full art Fliptini. It works on this site, unlike uh, TCGO. Which, uh, actually, I think that, that Fliptini 10 is coming out tomorrow. But anyway, so we're going to put Fliptini down. 
And uh, with that enough energy, that, with that we have enough energy to do this that sound attack. So we will announce over here that we're going to do that sound, and the opponent will get our message. So we're going to take a dice over here. We're going to roll a five, a two, and a two. So that's you can see the maybe. I don't know. You might have to full screen this and high res it to see. But uh, you'll see the results of the dice rolls over here. It says you dice roll five two two, and over here it'll say opponent dice roll five two two. So uh, that would do twenty. But let's say for whatever reason I want to invoke victory star. I want to get all three heads. So we would just say victory star. Obviously, you don't have to be this formal. You know, we, you can say something like reroll or victini time, something like that. You know, you don't have to be ultra formal about it. Or if you're on Skype, just whatever, you know. So two, one, and uh, six. So we got the same result. So now the opponent's going to have to come over here and put damage on Reshiram. You can also just click enter. And uh, another thing you can do is if you want, because this is kind of annoying for it to be all the way up here, I usually drag it down here. And then when you save that, and we here we're gonna put it on him. It'll say it'll remember where it was, so you don't have to come up here every time. You can drag it down there, and that's nice. So okay, that's that attack. Um, oh, and oh, here's a here's an interesting uh, little thing here. See how the both of these are shown right here. Sometimes uh, th there's a little bit of glitchiness on this. Uh, like we're gonna, let's search this card pile here and put this card out to right here. Now you can see it's over here, and let's uh, let's discard it again, and click here when finished. And uh, now you can see, if we search opponent discard pile, now we can see it's in there. So sometimes there's a little bit of if uh, difficulty with stuff is not where it should be. Like there's an energy card down here randomly on the bench, and generally you can fix that by asking your opponent to wiggle the card that you suspect is in the wrong place. Like just wiggle it around like that and uh, it'll snap to wherever it's supposed to be, kind of like resending the it's supposed to be right here message. So just keep that in mind for uh, if you get any sort of little issues like that or something looks funny, just, just make sure you bring that up and get that corrected so that there's no confusion later. And uh, I believe it's this deck's turn, so... We're, oh, I actually top-decked a uh, Quilava, that's nice. But uh, we have a rare candy, so we're just going to play it to get out of to get out of the tie flow. Too bad there's no fire in the discard pile, so... Uh, not yet, anyway. So we're going to uh, do declare blue flare over here. Brew, brew flare, brew, brew flare for 120. Discard the uh, the two fire, as that's what Reshiram does, and knock out poor Sally. Poor Sally gets knocked out. There used to be a, um, and I believe there was there was this in the first first match on this side I uploaded. There used to be a discard active thing on one of these. I don't know what on one of this uh, one of these menus up here. I don't know why they took that away. Um, but do keep that in mind that the site does rapidly update. So there could be like massive changes. Um, if there's anything really big um, that you notice, uh, post in the comments, and uh, I'll be sure to address it or maybe put an annotation as well. But uh, as of right now, you um, as of this moment, you'll just have to drag all the cards in there manually and. Uh, you can just return the uh, little damage counter back to this little place down here. So let's put up our uh, our Jason here and start start the turn with this. And let's see, I'm trying to think what else. What else? I'm not going to play this game to a conclusion anyway. Um, I'm pretty sure Reshi Ram is just way too strong and it's probably going to win. Um, let's see, we covered the searching. Covered the searching. If you do something like Junk Arm, you know, you can look through here and, and pull a card, put it back out to the mat to show it, and then put it in your hand, stuff like that. Um, where did it go? <laughs> did it go back to the discard pile? Uh, oh, I bet it went over here. Yeah, see, it went over here. That's one thing you have to be really cautious about. Let's see, where is it? It is, uh, between their hands. One thing to be very cautious about is avoid dragging stuff above this threshold, if you can help it. Uh, I believe what happened there is I dragged it over here, and it got stuck right here. So it's kind of like a memory leak, and now it's kind of gone because they can't move it back over there because it's their, you know, it's not their card. They can't touch it. So it uh, looks like that PCOM is kind of out of there. So you can avoid that by just not moving anything like that. If you want to, if you're searching discard and you decide, oh, wait, I want to pull it back here, put it back in the discard pile, don't drag it right here. Finish searching and then drag it back down here. <laughs> so, so something you guys can keep in mind for that. 
Uh, when you want to take a prize, just take a prize. Not too, not too uh, big a deal there. And let's see what else. Draw X if you want to draw one to fourteen. I'm not sure. I guess you can bin valid number. Okay. Um, you know, you can just draw whatever. Shouldn't be a big, big deal there. Hand return discard if I juniper. Let's let's pretend I had a juniper. I can discard and uh, draw seven. Like that right there. Arranged pretty nicely. Uh, one thing I do find odd is that when it draws stuff, it puts it on the left side, but when you arrange it, it uh, throws it on the right side, which kind of strikes me as weird. Generally, I like to keep my hand on the right side just for purposes like interviewers' questions where I need to look at the top X number of cards of my deck and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, I'll get, well, I guess a couple of limitations to this right now. If you uh, were to play something like Cover Fossil, there's not really a good way to search the bottom of your the bottom of your deck. You can you know like with interviewers you can just drag off the top eight. Uh, one thing you might be able to do if your opponent is cool with it is search your deck and you know look okay here's four here's three you know look at the bottom seven and um, you know maybe drag them out to the map or to the map to the mat and uh, but. Uh, Let's see. That's not. That's gonna. After you uh, search your deck, by the way, it automatically shuffles, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but you know, you're not supposed to really look at your whole deck whenever you play a fossil card like that. So that's kind of not the intended consequence. But uh, there's so much deck searching in Pokemon anyway that you know you can prob. You'll, you'll probably by that point have already looked through the contents of your deck to determine your prizes and stuff like that. So it's not a huge deal for casual games. Um, but you know, for, for competitive wise, it's it's kind of irksome. Another pr annoying problem is if you have a card such as um, the uh, Slow King with uh, Second Sight. That's a sweet. I, I run that card in a uh, this deck list. Can we log back in here, please? This uh, other Slow King. What is this deck called? BD yeah, BDSM Stripping and Bondage because it's got uh, the Sharpedo with uh, the Strip Bear flip with Flip Teeny, and then this. Uh, I like the slow king for its ability to pretty much drop their hand to zero and then a, and then control whatever they draw for the rest of the game um, and get rid of uh, the top card of their deck if you want to in Lime Junior. That's what this deck does. But say you have something like this where you may look at the top three cards of either player's deck and put them back. If you want to look at your opponent's deck, they kind of have to do that for you. Like say Reshiram's deck over here wanted to use second sight on the bench. Uh, the the best way to go about that is to have the opponent move the top three cards of their deck right here, and then say, okay, I want you to put the darkness energy on the bottom, so they return that first, and then the Scraggy, and then I'll give you the Wubat, and uh, then when they start their turn, they'll draw and they've got the Wubat, and then next turn, if you don't do it again, they'll have the Scrafty and then the the dark energy. So that's kind of how you have to go about that. It's a little bit irksome that you can't really do it yourself, but you know, again, you just have to work with your opponent to do it. And uh, the fossil thing is probably a bigger deal than that is. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think if there's any other like big limitations on decks. Figures that you know, I also make a, a fossil deck here. Fossil deck somewhere here. Collect the deck list, I guess. Uh, yeah, F figures I make a fossil deck, and then I make that deck, and neither of them really work that well. But anyway, yeah, here's the plume fossil. Yeah, he looks at the bottom seven, but it, there's so there's difficulties. Another really, 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 really big problem, I guess, pertaining to that bottom of the deck stuff, is that you can't really put cards at the bottom of your deck to begin with. So, like, what this deck does, for example, is um, you try to get a plume fossil in the discard pile, and then you would use recycle to put it on top of your deck. And then you would play research record. <laughs> That's three, four, three cards, th three things that have to work out just perfectly. And uh, no, no, you would get an, excuse me, you would get an Arkin, this guy. You would get this guy in your discard pile using stuff like Junk Arm or Juniper or whatever. Then you would recycle. Then, assuming you flipped heads, then you would research record, look at the top four and do all that stuff. And then uh, ideally, you would like just put Arkin at the bottom. And uh, then you would play your plume fossil. So, like, if you say, um, let's pretend this was my Arkin that I, it's in my discard pile. Say I play Recycle, Flip Heads, put it on top of my deck. I play Research Record, I look at the top four, I say, okay, here's this Arkin. You can just, like, tell the opponent, well, 
I'm putting it right here, and this is consider this the bottom of my deck. And then um, you can you can all flip flip things face down, you know. So you can kind of make like a bottom of the deck pile right here, sort of. Uh, it's kind of a weird workaround, but then by the time you play Plume Fossil, and you know, ideally you're gonna play Plume Fossil that same turn, so you'll go ahead and you'll get it out. So yeah, that's sort of a ir irksome workaround, but it is possible. There's so yeah, there's just some issues with this, with uh, it not being quite as high tech as TCGO is, but uh, you can just get a little bit creative and work around them. And uh, I don't know, it's it's a good site for playtesting, like. If you want to, if there's like this deck that you want to assemble on TCGO that, you know, uh, it's an interesting concept, but do I really want to get the cards for it? You know, you can test it out on here, or if you're like a lot of people and you're dirt poor and you can't even afford like 50 cents per booster pack for whatever reason, uh, certainly this is something that you can do as well. You know, you get what you pay for, obviously. But uh, currently this does PvP and TCGO or PvP versus friends and uh, TCGO only does random matchup as of this time uh, hopefully they'll be getting that added soon but uh, I think that will pretty much wrap up this tutorial on uh, how to make a deck how to register which hopefully most people could figure out um, I didn't walk through all the steps for it but if you've ever registered for a site before it should be pretty straightforward for you and uh, also just some of the uh, the uh, nuances on playing on this site and uh, setting up a setting up a game setting up a uh, setting up a, uh, a deck and stuff and uh, when you want to end I think you can just fairly safely just close the tab there's no like disconnect thing on there and there's no like you know player rankings or anything so you're not gonna get DC'd with that one thing I am actually gonna try right here and notice that this still says your battle is in progress um, I think eventually this will get oh like and here's another thing too um, I think eventually this will get uh, filtered out you know like it'll get okay kicked off but uh, say I got disconnected on my internet and I want to return to game, you can actually do that. It's DC proof, or not DC proof, but DC safe. Um, see, I returned with the uh, on the Russia Ram side, so let me return on the Aaron side too. So uh, say you your connection lags out or something, and you you know lose your internet connection for whatever reason, uh, you can actually get right back in the game, and uh, it'll be updated to where you were. So if you're well, I guess if you're on Skype or whatever, you're going to get disconnected there too. But uh, you know, if you can get back on momentarily before the opponent, you know, abandons you, then uh, you can still get back into the game, which is really, really nice. Very glad you can do that. That happened to me in one game against, I forget who it was, but I, I think that's something TCGO, I'm not sure if it can do that or not. Um, I think there may be like a little window if you disconnect to rejoin, but I'm not sure about that. So that anyway, that's a really nice feature of this. But uh, what I wanted to do before we end this video is uh, test out that password. For uh, it might be a little bit better if you're using a ZAT to communicate. Let's create a new battle, and we'll just use one of the um, one of the default decks up here. If you don't want to make your own deck, there's some uh, user submitted decks like here, right here. Torpedo Victini Slow King. See, looks like I made an arch type deck after all with that one. And uh, here's some of like the the top tier metagame decks: Shen Mega Magnazone. If you can't afford that one, you know you want to test it out, see if you like it. Embor Veshiram, Gothitel Reuniclus, the uh, Zekrom Pachirisu, Shaman Pachirisu is ridiculously overpriced on TCGO. But uh, you can say, let's say we want to do uh, that. Ver let's say we want to do uh, Magnazone and Mega versus that. So let's try uh, password here, and we'll password with Coop. Our password will be Coop. Continue. So what we can then do is come back over here and continue to game and now we'll be able to see here's this lobby oh look region Alabama um, and you say we can give password here the password is coop and apparently it's not case sensitive I think I may have put in a uh, upper, uppercase K there and uh, let's pick uh, some ZPS here and now we're gonna get started with this so that may be a, a better option if you're playing on a ZAT um, but if you're uh, if you are uh, able to communicate with someone in a way that doesn't mess up URLs when you click them, like Zat does, then uh, you should be you should be fine with that. So, oh look at that! That's actually well, no, actually you would need a the yeah, ideally you would start with a uh, Pachirisu here, not a Shaman. But uh, anyway, 
there's that and there's this this didn't get any basics with its uh, magna zone but anyway so that's how you go about this um, use passwords if you're for some reason links aren't working and uh, alternately you can just avoid uh, showing your game to the public lobby by making it a uh, private game and then people won't won't see it and be tempted to click on it try to guess your password and stuff like that but shouldn't be a big problem um, so go out there and play some on this um, one thing about it is you do have to know how to play so if you would like to learn to play and with this and you don't know how well that's one good thing about TCGO you can go and do the uh, tutorials I'm not logged in right now but uh, you can go and do uh, some of these tutorials it shouldn't take you too long the TCG is honestly not that hard to learn uh, certainly mastering all the stuff with the metagame as it, as in the DS game is uh, something you'll have to learn as kind of learn as you go and develop your own uh, your own uh, you know style of do you want to just play some top tier OU metagame decks or do you want to do uh, what are called rogue decks you know more like kind of like a uh, custom build stuff like Seaman does with like a like a Specs Bliss you know some novelty stuff do you want to do you know whatever and uh, this will probably help to teach you some of the basics and then uh, hopefully if you play with someone who knows what they're doing aka me uh, you can get corrected like I know I was playing a game a while back where uh, dude tried to do um, I think it was viral uh, he, he was doing junk arm and he got back a Sharan I was like wait you can't get back Sharan with junk arm so you know you can it's nice if you have an opponent who, who you know who can correct you but not be like raw raw you're stupid you know it's like that that's that's not nice be nice to people who are trying to learn to play. All right, uh, okay, I, th I think we've rambled on long enough. Uh, you guys probably see how to play. Um, if you have any questions, certainly leave them in the in the uh, in the comments. And uh, also, one more disclaimer: remember, this is being developed uh, quite rapidly. Uh, like the first game I had on this versus Malice, you may notice it was like a sort of a different background. The very next day, it, it had changed. So, and just and just today, they edit change or recently anyway. They uh, made this little thing where you can edit the, because it used to be you could edit this, uh, edit the description, and you can change uh, if people can see it in the public gallery or not. But uh, anyway, so that will do it. Thanks for watching, and hope to see more TCG up soon, later days.